Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Michaela Schweiger. I work with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, Regions and Tourism in Vienna, Austria. And my department deals with general agricultural policy, data management and further training. And in this context, we were also the preparing the part of the CAP strategic plans uh, regarding the cross-cutting objective uh, and even ACIS. Now, on my first slide, uh, I prepared an overview uh, about the ACIS system in Austria. Uh, maybe somebody, somebody of you already know it. It was part of an evaluation uh, take, taking place last year. Now, in the center of our ACIS, we have our farmers and foresters uh, and grouped all around the different participants. Um, the little blue boxes on top uh, represent the Federal Ministry uh, of Agriculture and also the uh, state and provincial authorities. All the yellow boxes uh, represent uh, our farmers, farmers association uh, for cattle breeding, for horticulture, um, for grains, for wine, um, and other linked institutions and partners and even the media. Um, the green boxes represent uh, the scientific part, uh, our universities, research institutes, agricultural schools, colleges, training facilities, uh, uh, and so on. The brown boxes are some independent consultants also uh, taking part in our ACIS. Uh, the orange boxes, NGOs, charities, consumer information, and last but not least, also our paying agency. Uh, it gives a pretty good overview uh, about the structure of our system. Now, uh, during our SWOT analysis for the cross-cutting objective, uh, we found some strengths and weaknesses in our ACIS. I will start with the strengths. The Austrian ACIS is functioning rather well, but improvements are still possible. Uh, we have uh, lots of well-known participants, uh, as you have seen on the first slide, farmers and their associations, the chambers of agriculture with the advisory service, agricultural research and education, universities, the ministry and the regional administration, the national rural network, uh, the innovation partnership, the paying agency, even private advisors. Uh, we detected frequent and regular interactions on many levels. There are meetings, seminars, webinars, uh, projects uh, for further training. And there is a rather broad consultation on the annual agricultural work program uh, of the research institutes uh, who are very close uh, to the ministry. On the weaknesses side, uh, we found that uh, especially the research institutes are not so integrated as we would like to see them. Uh, they have their established uh, research and testing agenda. Uh, access for farmers is possible, but uh, it definitely needs better organizations. And what we also found are difficulties in disseminating recent scientific developments. There are lots and lots of really uh, um, good studies and um, publications, but uh, we need a kind of translation of the study results for the pra practical purposes in agriculture. Uh, they are published in scientific journals, uh, but what our advisory services and the farmers really need are a more day-to-day -day or down-to-earth language. And uh, our farmers came up uh, with a problem. Uh, th uh, there is some exchange with the farmers uh, regarding their questions for scientific solutions, but this exchange should be more regular uh, and we should try to find a kind of bottom-up approach so that the farmers can raise their questions uh, to the scientists. So in conclusion of our needs assessment, uh, ARCIS is well established but uh, we need a better structured and organized cooperation. Now, for the CAP strategic plans, we have some interventions uh, uh, in the line uh, regarding Article 71 cooperation. Uh, we placed uh, the innovation intervention 
uh, we will continue the existing measure, uh, but taking into account new developments and new elements, especially for the rural innovation systems. And we will choose a slightly different approach regarding the application and selection criteria. It will still be a two-step approach, uh, but we will grant a longer time period uh, for the second and definitive selection for the projects. And we would also like to keep it a little bit simpler than before. And what would we also like to keep is the person of the innovation broker uh, supporting the projects. And uh, some of you may know her. It's in the person of Johanna Rohrhofer. She's doing a really excellent job. Uh, for Article 72, knowledge transfer, we have three uh, interventions planned. Uh, one big intervention is the farm advisory system. Here we will also rely on the existing system uh, with some modifications, uh, especially regarding the administration uh, of uh, the subsidies. And we will also like to integrate some of the private advisors and we are thinking of uh, a kind of advisory checks for the farmers so they can choose even a private advisor and get uh, like a, a flat rate paid uh, for the service. And we are thinking of some cooperation models uh, for specific questions, especially for very small structures in agriculture. In Austria, this would be horticulture. There are only uh, a few uh, farmers and not every agricultural chamber, chamber has a horticulture expert um, on the payroll. The second intervention will be on knowledge, knowledge exchange for agriculture. Here we are planning projects and studies uh, targeting especially farmers. And the second uh, intervention is on knowledge transfer for rural enterprises. Uh, here we concentrate on off-farm projects targeting the whole rural population and going a little bit beyond the agricultural questions. So it will be diversification or protection for uh, natural resources. For the CAP Network and Innovation and ACIS. Um, the, the new uh, CAP regulation allows several options for establishing the future networks. So in Austria, uh, so far, we have no final decision how we will set up the national rural network. It will be probably outsourced, uh, but uh, it's still work to be done on that decision. And for the ACIS, as I told you, based on our SWOT analysis and the needs assessment, uh, we will launch possible project under Article 72 with the clear aim to develop the existing structures to work on better integration of all participating groups and partners and stakeholders to find one or several platforms, tool interfaces for a regular and coordinated exchange to improve cooperation on all levels and between all levels. And um, for, for planning uh, the chapter eight on modernization and ACIS, we are holding uh, several workshops with the key stakeholders and partners. These workshops are still ongoing and they are organized by the current National Rural Network. And we are gathering lots of ideas uh, and we can cover all positions and views of the different partners. So there is still some work to be done on, on the chapter eight of the CAP strategic plan. And we are also hoping uh, for some input uh, from uh, this webinar. Now for the future, uh, in one of our workshops, uh, we were asked to find a drawing or a picture uh, who will symbolize the future of ACIS. And one of the uh, participants presented us this photograph. It was from a forestry innovation project. And uh, most of the participants liked the photo very much. Uh, it was an innovative project uh, for new ways of wooden uh, construction. It is solid but open. It is well structured. It is connecting. And there is a lot of room for interaction as we would like to have it in the future ACIS. Thank you very much, and uh, maybe I can answer some questions. <laughs>